Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. So this proposition, like the previous ones, are dealing with fractions. I just would like to remind you that the distinction between part and parts. A part is a simple fraction like 1 over 3, 1 over 5, always 1 over something else. So that is a part. Parts is when the fraction is something other than 1 over, and it's like 2 thirds, or 3 quarters, or 5 sevenths. So this is the distinction between part and parts. So I'm representing the fractions as a p over q. Of course, this would be the simplest fraction. And this proposition states that if b is the fra a fraction of a and d is a fraction of c, then if we subtract the two, that the difference will be equal to the same fraction of a minus c. So in our proof, we are going to start with a certain um, situation where we have AB is a certain fraction of CD, and AE is the same fraction of CF. And in this example, the fraction is actually 2 thirds. It doesn't matter that it's 2 thirds, it could be any fraction. Um, but to follow through the proof, if you need to just Check out the little lines, what I'm drawing here. If they're the same color, they are of the same value. It's to help give you an extra visual aid to this proposition. All right, so the first thing we're going to do in our proof is we're going to create a line, GH, that is equal to AB. Now, AB is some fraction of CD. AE is some fraction of CF. Since GH equals AB, then GH is also the same fraction of CD that AE as is of CF. Now what we're going to do is we're going to divide AE into the number of parts of CD. It's a little confusing, but what it basically means is that we are going to take whatever part of CF so here I've shown the little parts that are green, and we're going to divide AE into those parts. So since this is 2 thirds, we're dividing it into 2. Likewise, we are going to divide GH into parts that is demonstrated by this little pink line, which in this case is 2 thirds. So we are going to divide GH into 2. So we're dividing GH into 2, and we're dividing AE into 2, because in this particular example, the fraction is 2 thirds. If it were 3 quarters, we'd be dividing by 3. So now we have GK equals KH equals one part of CD, so it's one part of CD, and AL is equal to LE, and it's one part of CF. Okay? Before we go further, I just need to prove that GK is greater than AL. Well, GK is the same fraction of CD as AL is of CF. So CD is larger than CF. Since it's the same fraction in both cases, GK is greater than AL. In which case, we can then take a segment of this line, GM, which is less than GK, where GM is equal to AL. So GM is going to be equal to one fraction, or one part, of CF. What we have left over is GK minus GM, GK minus GM. Well, since they are the same fraction of CD and CF, GK minus GM will be the same fraction as the difference between CD and CF. CD minus CF is equal to FD. GK minus GM is equal to MK. So we have that MK is the same fraction of FD as GK is of CD. 
CD. We're going to do the similar thing here where we have KH and KH is larger than LE using the same argument as before. GK is a fraction of CD and LE is the same fraction of CF. So KH will be greater than LE because CD is greater than CF. So with that in mind, we then can create a segment KN where KN is less than KH and we'll let KN equal LE which will be the same fraction of CF, the single fraction, the single part. All right, now, now KH is the same part of CD as KN is of CF. So if we take KH minus KN, KH minus KN, it will be the same part of CD minus CF. Now KH minus KN is NH, and CD minus CF is FD. So we have that NH is the same part of FD as GK is of CD. This proof is rather long, so we have to continue on to another page. I have simply rewritten everything that we have demonstrated so far. There's nothing new here. It's just rewritten and got rid of some of the extraneous information. So carrying on, we have that GK and KH are both equal, and they're equal to one part of CD. MK and NH are equal, and they're equal to one part of FD. Now, if we were to start adding up all the various equal bits, like GK plus KH, and MK plus NH, however many parts there were, in this case it's two, but it could be P, we have the sum of the little small pieces is equal to the fractions of FD that AB was of CD, and GK plus KH plus, if there were more, which is equal to GH, is also the same fractions of CD. Now, AB, well, let's look at it this way. We have AB minus AL minus LE would result in this bit left over, EB. If we take GH, subtract off GM and KN, we are left with MK plus NH. Now, AB is equal to GH by definition. AL and GM are equal by definition. LE and KN are equal by definition. So therefore, we have that EB is equal to MK plus NH. So EB is equal to MK plus NH. Now we have that MK plus NH is a fractions of FD, and EB is the same fractions of FD because they're equal. So EB is equal to AB minus AE. FD is equal to CD minus CF. So I've just rewritten this equation in the longer form. We started that AB is some fraction of CD or fractions of CD, and AE is the same fractions of CF. AB minus AE, AB minus AE, is equal to the same fractions of CD minus CF. And that is what we set out to demonstrate.